Hi everyone, and Kate here to do the middle grade book tag. And this was created by Amanda at the Curly Hair Reader. And so I figured that instead of doing a video on my favorite middle grade books, because I am getting a fair number of new middle grade favorites this month during middle grade March. And so I thought maybe I would wait to do that a little bit later in the year so I could have a more comprehensive list, including the ones that I'm reading this month and maybe a little bit beyond while I'm very enthusiastic and on a roll with middle grade fiction. And I will do the tag instead. And the first question is, what is the most recent middle grade book you read? So I finished this very morning, Emily's Runaway Imagination by Beverly Cleary. Beverly Cleary is one of those authors that I haven't really met a book that I disliked from her. I really enjoyed this. It's about Emily, a little girl who's an only child. She lives with her family just outside of Portland and her grandparents run a uh, sort of um, dry goods store downtown. It's very early 1900s, but it is very exciting when her grandfather gets a new car. He gets a car for like for the first time and she's very excited about that. And also what I love uh, part of this book is that Emily has, um, she writes a letter uh, and asking if that their town can receive funding and receive a library. So there's a lot of that kind of unfolding throughout it, but she is very imaginative and gets distracted and, you know, some, some little hijinks ensue because of that. But I just find Beverly Cleary to be such an endearing author. And I did not know about this one until recently. And I got a whole, checked out a whole audio collection from the library. And so I'm loving finding out about several books from Beverly Cleary that I did not know about previously. Question two is, what is a middle grade book someone read to you as a child? And so I did have books read to me regularly as a child, but I know one of the very most vivid memories is Mrs. Donald in third grade reading The Little House in the Big Woods. I really remember that and being just so charmed by the story and loving following it. And I have just loved that series. I have adored it so much ever since then. And the third one is... What was your favorite middle grade book as a child? And I'm pretty sure it was Gone Away Lake and Return to Gone Away Lake. I spoke about these briefly on a recommendations video over at Krista uh, at Books and Jams channel, one of the middle grade March hosts. And it is a little duology about Portia Blake and her cousin Foster and these old abandoned Victorian mansions that they find in what used to be a lake resort, but is now turned into a swamp. But there are still two people living in the houses, a brother and a sister that were children when the houses and the resort was, you know, very up and coming and just really this beautiful, beautiful place that people love to visit. And so they befriend this older brother and sister and have such great adventures and they each pick a mansion of their own to fix up. And then I don't want to give anything away about the sequel, but the sequel is wonderful as well. And I just remember being so enchanted by these books growing up. And um, also though, the Betsy Tacey books, I definitely loved too. So I think those two are the ones that like really stuck out in my mind being really, really excited about. And then um, what is your favorite middle grade book as an adult? So Amanda was able to limit herself to four titles and I was trying to limit myself to four titles and I just kept thinking, well, I can't not talk about this one. So I have 10 titles here and then I have no idea how many will be on my list when I do like a longer video. But the 10 titles for you are Caddy Woodlawn by Carol Reese Brink, I think is how you say her name. And I just, I love this book so much. Did not read it as a child. I don't know how that happened, but I just love the character of Caddy and how rough and tumble she is. But she's also incredibly endearing and she's strong and I think just such a wonderful role model. The next one, uh, second on the list is The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear. Uh, this is another one that I read for the first time last year and I loved it so much. I really do enjoy middle grade historical fiction with, um, you know, a young lady as the lead and seeing kind of their growth as a character while also while seeing the storyline unfold. And I just really, really enjoyed that one also. And it's set during the time of the Salem witch trial. So a really interesting 
um, time in history to set a story. Then Sweep by Jonathan Oxier. This was the group read for Middle Grade March last year, and it is just this really um, just harrowing read in a way, but it's middle grade, so you can, you can handle the hurt and the ache that is in there, but it does address child labor. It addresses anti-Semitism. It has such a love of story in it, and it involves uh, some different legends and folklore, which is really fun. And then it's set during the Victorian era and really hones in on industrialization and child labor laws. So it just has a lot, a really rich tapestry that's behind it, and then it's told marvelously well. The next one is Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine, and I just love this book so much. I reread it again this month, and Ella is another wonderful, wonderful heroine, and the way that uh, she figures out just how much strength she has in her when she thinks she doesn't is so inspiring. And I also think it's just a really entertaining read. And I love the different phases of the story, whether she's at boarding school or traveling, or it's finishing school or traveling, or is at home living with this new inherited stepmother and stepsisters that she really does not like, and how this kind of affects her life is really, really wonderful. And then I have the Little House series. I really, I had to put it on here and I just, oh, it's such a good series. I've just finished reading through it with Peter, except for the first four years. And I might not actually reread the first four years because I remember the last time that I read it, it was just such a, uh, it was like, you know, the bad peanut at the end of the bag, that phrase, that was what that experience was for me reading that book. And especially because I think maybe she died before it was published. So it was kind of her daughter putting together the notes, but just all of the hardship that they went through in those first four years of their marriage um, is just so, so sad and heartbreaking. But then, um, you know, I looked into her life later on and actually her adulthood was uh, a, kind of a lot calmer than a lot of her childhood. So some people critique these books for leaving out a lot of the trauma that was in her life, but I think that's totally her prerogative. I don't think it's a negative thing at all. If you want to write a children's series and just include some of the really tumultuous events in your life, I mean, she had enough tragedy in her life to last for like 10 lifetimes of a modern person. So I, um, I don't hold that against her at all. Like I said, I've heard some people like kind of offended that she she more sugarcoats things, but it's a children's series, like do whatever you want with those. And they're just, there's something about the writing style. It's so simple, but it's so beautiful. There's such an elegance to it. And I think she's such an inspiring person. And the next on the list is Miracles on Maple Hill. I read this for the first time last year, found a lot of new favorite children's books last year. And it is about a little girl and her brother and their family moves to a farm on Maple Hill when her father comes home from World War II and he has major PTSD. And so they move to the calm of this farm and kind of the wonderful things that end up coming to this little girl's life because of that and um, the ways that their family learns to come together is just really special. So another one with a, a leading lady that I loved. Uh, then we have Rabbit Hill, and this is a really special book, and it's very charming in that there is this really lovely family that lives in a house at the edge of the woods, and they have a garden, and all of the animals know that they can kind of mooch off this garden, but that family moves out, and so there's a new family coming, and they have no idea what the food source will be like when this new family moves in. And I just, I, it's told in such a fun way. It's a really special book. And I really want to read the sequel, which is also called, I think it's called The Long Winter, which is the same as one of the Little House books. But I think it's called The Long Winter. I want to read that, though. Um, then we have, what was it? Oh, the Betsy Tacy series, obviously, is so beloved. So, the like technical rule for what is middle grade fiction is fiction that is written for eight to 12 year olds. And I've heard a lot of people say like, well, is Betsy Tacy, you know, is it middle grade? Because Betsy grows up older than 12. But the rule is that it's written for eight to 12 year olds, not that it features eight to 12 year olds all the time. And so I think it counts as middle grade fiction because I think I was around middle grade age when I read the Betsy Tacy books and loved them so much. Um, 
So yeah, definitely older middle grade, but I think they definitely qualify. And I just love this series so much. All of the Deep Valley books uh, are such near and dear characters to me. Betsy Ray um, and her family, the Rays, I just, oh, I have so much affection for them. And they're a literary family I would have loved to have been a part of, especially because they were based on a real family. And then last on the list is Little Women by Louise May Alcott. I have so much, so much love for this book. Um, and I just, the four March sisters with their, all of their distinct personalities, but the bond that they have and the trials and tribulations that they go through makes for a really moving read. And hopefully, maybe when I do my, you know, favorite middle grade um, video later in the year, Eight Cousins will end up on the list. I still haven't started it. I was saving it for a little bit later in the month. The next question is, who is your favorite middle grade author? So I know, you know, I have all those favorites listed there, but actually my two favorite middle grade authors um, didn't end up on that short list. And it's because I think, you know, those are my favorite books, but I don't necessarily love every single book by those authors. Mudheart Lovelace, yes. Um, but I want to read, she has some more middle grade, so I want to read more of her middle grade. But that's all to say that the two authors that I picked for this, the first one is Beverly Cleary. So the Henry Huggins series, Emily's Runaway Imagination that I just talked about. Then there's an Ellen Tebbets series that I've just read and really liked. And she, I haven't met a book that I really disliked from her. There's something about her writing style that I just find really engrossing. And she has, she's really good at writing children and talking about the scrapes that they can get into. To, and her books are just so easy for me to fall into. And then next would be, um, I just totally drew a blank, Kate D. Camillo. So I have really, really enjoyed some of Kate D. Camillo's books and Flora and Ulysses is by far my favorite. And actually, when I hear Kate D. Camillo fans talk about her, that's usually lower on their list. So I don't know what it was about it. Something about it has just this very larger than life feel to it. But one thing I really love about Kate D. Camillo's books is that there are so many quirky characters in them. I, I just read Raimi Nightingale, and I just love the, the vibe to her books. Really, really appreciate them. Okay, um, the next question is, what middle grade book do you think should be required reading in school? And this was a pretty easy book pick because it is a book that I just did a buddy read of with Katie from Life Between Words, and that is Each Little Bird That Sings by Deborah Wiles. And this book is so special. It really grapples with grief and loss and how you deal with all of that, how you process it. And she's just set this story. It's set in Mississippi and this really unique uh cast of characters that she has in it. Uh, the main character is Comfort Snowburger and her family runs a funeral home and she has been to over 200 funerals. So she's very familiar with death. Um, she knows kind of the ins and outs of funerals and th that whole process. But this book really brings you up close and personal with just the, the kind of logistics of grieving and dealing with the fact that, you know, when someone is gone, they're gone forever. Um, and it's just told in such a poetic, beautiful way and has such a love of family in it. I loved this book so much. The next question is, what is your favorite middle grade book cover? So Amanda actually held up on the like Puffin Chalk, I think it's, yeah, Puffin Chalk edition of Peter Pan. And I own and love the Puffin Chalk edition of Pippi Longstocking. So I really love these editions. Um, I think they're so beautiful. Uh, then I would also say this like Penguin Threads edition of Little Women is one of my favorites. I really love that. Then um, this cover of The Witch of Blackbird Pond, it is an older book. So there are some covers and the one I own, I don't like nearly as much as this one. I just love how beautiful it is. Then Sweet is just such a beautiful cover. I love the color scheme of it and how it looks like it's drawn kind of by chalk. Really, really love that. Uh, then Magic for Marigold and Anne of Green Gables, the editions done by Source Books. These Source uh, Books covers done by Jackie Oak, I think is her name. Some of my absolute favorites. They're so beautiful. 
And then the last question is my favorite um, middle grade book to screen adaptation. And that hands down, I actually did not have to think hard about this because I am rather picky with my adaptations of books. And so there aren't a lot that I, that I think I love. And so I just know that I love the 1986 mini series of A Little Princess. And this is the only film adaptation out there that has the same ending as the book. Um, and it's just a marvelous, marvelous mini series. And I highly, highly recommend it. It's up on YouTube and I hope you all would maybe give it a watch. So I will leave it at that. I don't think I'll tag anyone because I think everyone who's super interested in doing this is probably just going to do it of their own volition. So I will leave it at that and I will be back for another video soon and have a lovely day. Bye.